the National House of Chiefs has urged the electorate to vote no yeah, in the December 17th referendum seeking to allow the participation of political parties in the local level election. So according to the chiefs, allowing political parties to participate in the local polls will further promote exclusiveness associated with the political power in the country. A statement signed by the president of the House of Chiefs, the Akmukmumethia of the Asogli State, Togwiapede, the 14th, noted the coexistence of the central government and local government controlled by different political parties clearly demonstrates that the culture of quote winner takes all will prevail at the level to the detriment of the united development endeavors. The House indicated that the introduction of partisan policies into local government will be accompanied by the unwholesome political culture and the corruption associated with partisan politics, which has already done a lot of harm to our society and economy. Pretty interesting they're coming in, but let's stay with this a bit further. Uh, uh, Dr. Odrosai is, Dr. Eric Odrosai is a local government expert. He joins me on the telephone for some more on this. Dr. Odrosai, thank you for your time. Good evening to you. Now, first of all, this is the National House of Chiefs. How do you react to this statement from them urging that people should vote no at the uh, referendum? Thank you very much. Um, Article 276 of the Constitution uh, prevents chiefs from engaging in partisan, active partisan politics. So any attempt to introduce multi-party system into any of the levels of government, uh, naturally, you would uh, expect this reaction from the National House of Chiefs. But with the feedback that is coming from other members of the House of Chiefs to the extent that um, the, the press release may not have received the support of the majority of the House is something that is of concern to us. That is not with, that's not withstanding. All the issues raised have been addressed in the national roadmap leading to the election of MNDCV. And I want to assure all and sundry that the issue of winner takes all is one of the important reasons why multi-partisan democracy is to be introduced into local government systems so that we can have some of the opposition political parties also winning some of the seats at the local government level so they can put a check on the government of the day. On the issue of corruption and divisiveness, it is a way of ensuring that at least if you broaden the electoral base, you would be able to ensure that you can have the best candidate. So it will be difficult for a candidate to bribe his way out. That's notwithstanding. The issues raised are germane. They are issues that can be taken on board because there is a national roadmap guiding the entire process. So it can be taken on board. But I think we should be able to interrogate further the authenticity of the press statement on the, at the backdrop of the feedback and the concerns raised by other members of the House of Chiefs. I see. But then again, I mean, beyond the fact that they, are, I mean, they, they favor and no politics uh, sort of local government. How about the other issue about Article 55.3 itself not having anything to do with election of MMDCs for that matter, but rather making the election partisan? So there are, there are many who also are arguing, those who are for the no vote, also putting up the fact that election of MMDCs, which is actually tangential, so amending 2431, which requires to third majority of parliament is what has to be done and not a referendum. That unfortunately they've gotten it wrong. Two things are happening at the same time. Election of MMDC, which is governed by Article 243 Clause 1, and it's already in Parliament, and then democratizing the local government system, which is governed by Article 55 Clause 3. So once 243 goes through, chief executive will be elected. But how are we going to elect chief executives? Are we going to elect them on partisan or non-partisan basis? That is the answer 55-3 uh, uh, provides. So there are two things happening. We can elect chief executives without going through a referendum. But we are going through a referendum because of the need to democratize the system. 
That is why we are going through the referendum. So well, at, at, at what yeah. point? At what point, really, the the the, the partisan involvement really come into this conversation? I mean, the chiefs are of the opinion that it's coming at, a, at a, the latter part of this whole conversation and that indeed the, there's more consultation that is needed. As a matter of fact, there are people who have called for a national stakeholders conference on this. Well, um, last year, the Ministry of Local Government consulted uh, and took nationwide consultation in all the then 10 regions of Ghana. And these consultations attracted participation from all the political parties and national house of chiefs were even consulted. You know, so there have been a wider consultation on this subject because those who are reading politics into it, you remember the NPP promised they were going to elect chief, they were going to elect chief executive within 24 months in office. Mm. That will require only amendment to Article 243 Clause 1 and it will have ended there. But after consultation, the popular view was that there is a need to democratize the local government system. In that case, after amending 243, then you have to move further to ask the citizens whether it should be partisan or non-partisan, hence necessitating the need for a referendum. If it were to be the NPP manifesto alone, it would have been achieved by amending 2431. But to further democratize it, that is why we are going for the referendum. So, I thank you for your time this evening. Dr. Eric Odrosa is a local government expert.